All right, fellas. Great job getting past Horizon Papa in that quarterfinal. Now we know what's in front of us. We've got Auckland City over two legs, honestly. I'm quite happy about that. They can't just flip their way through after 90 minutes. So I think this actually suits us more than a one-off game. We know we can beat them. We've done it before. Charity Cup, Chatham Cup, all that sort of stuff. Let's get the job done over two legs, make the final, and bring home this Champions League. Up the cashmere. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 58 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with Cashmere Technical Income of Day. Kind of feels like a final over two legs in the OFC Champions League even though it is just the semis because we take on Auckland City to imagine who wins this is a massive chance to pick up the final in the next episode and also we'll keep you updated in and around that about what's happening in the Southern League as well. So looking forward to this big semi-final in the Champions League in today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but a couple of days ago the last episode we made our way through the quarterfinals of this competition against horizon sport horizon parfo dollar each way there for the team out of new caledonia so if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner very comfortable win in the first league a little bit scratchier away in the second leg, but that 5-0 win did mean we made our way through comfortably to the semi-finals of this Champions League, and that's what we come back for in today's episode. We're taking on Auckland City, who of course were the team that beat us in the final last year on penalty. So definitely looking for some revenge on them in this competition in today's episode. And you imagine if we win this, a massive chance to pick up our first OFC Champions League here at Kashmir Tech when we take on one of Navua or Tafia in the final tomorrow. But to be fair, does look like that. Would be against Navua, who to be fair to them, I'm pretty sure are unbeaten so far as well in the Champions League this season. But before we ever look at Auckland City going into the first league being played at the GMP, we've just played one game off the back of the quarterfinals in the last episodes. Unfortunately, our rotation team yet again kind of let me down as we only picked up a one-all draw at home against Nelson Suburbs. Be fair, Nelson Suburbs have got off to a decent start to this new Southern League season, but it took a second-half goal to De Hotman de Villiers to cancel out a first-half one there to Thumden Doy for a one-all draw stats-wise. Definitely a game that we should have been winning, but for some reason, that was not the case. So a bit concerning. Now I've drawn our last two games going in to the first leg of this OFC Champions League semi-final, albeit we have been giving a good rest to our first team as we're possible. So hopefully they'll be fit to fire when we do take on Auckland City. But what that does mean for the National League overall, once we make our way down to the Southern League, we're in second. Three points behind Christchurch United, but to be fair, do have a game in hand, but also join on points with Nelson Suburbs. So that result does mean Nelson Suburbs could later in the season get the chance to overtake us. But hopefully, once we get through the Champions League, can then focus a bit more on the Southern League and then start to stamp our authority on that competition. But fair to say, recent results off the back of that first league win in the quarterfinals of the Champions League haven't been too great. But hopefully, going back to something a bit closer to our first team might change that here, especially at home when we take on Auckland City in this OFC Champions League semi-final. To be fair, their form also quite similar to ours. They drew with Manuka United free all in that most recent game they played in the Northern League. So it's kind of similar situation to us maybe resting some first teamers going in to this Champions League semi-final, but hopefully our squad here is a bit stronger as it should be based on the season preview, which I've seen a few times now. Hot favourites here in New Zealand, so that should also be the case in Oceania. We have had one departure actually though off the back of that episode with the quarterfinals, and that was one of the players that we did sign on a non-contract because Sergio Mosquera as well as Aldo Medina, they have both gone back to America. Mosquera, he got picked up by San Diego, unfortunately. Just didn't quite get good enough a contract for him, but to be fair, his potential actually wasn't that high, so not too fussed about him leaving on a free, but it does mean our DM depth not quite as good in our Champion League squad. Actually a bit more frustrated about Medina leaving, because he looked a bit more promising, but to be fair, 
that's not too big an issue. Wasn't registered. For our Champions League squad, we have brought in a youngster, Imperio Pacini. That was last month, and to be fair, he plays that same position as Aldo Medina. But the main news in those transfers is that Mosquera, our backup DM for the Champions League this season, is no longer here, so it does mean a little bit of a change in terms of our bench balance. Hopefully, Sukamoto can get through both legs of this Champions League semi-final, and thankfully, no injury concerns going into this one either, so hopefully we can pick up a win here in the first league from the GMP in the Champions League semi-finals against Auckland City. And here are the team sheets for the first league of this OFC Champions League semi-final. We've gone with our straight-out best 11 these days with no injury concerns. So that's quite nice. First time in a little while we've put out the best 11 here at Cashmere Technical. They are Auckland City. To be fair, that also does look like quite a strong 4-2-3-1 that they are going with. But hopefully we can take an advantage into that second leg up in Auckland. And it's taken a little while for the first highlight here of the semi-final. The first league, unfortunately, we had the ball there briefly, but do give it away. So Auckland City might here get the first chance of this game, which would continue some pretty average form that we've been carrying recently. Good week there from Deander to get in behind Louis Enrique. Nice ball there for Stipe Ukic as well, but that is a massive save from Josh Hawkins already, proving that he might be a difference maker from Mark Anderson in that Champions League final last season. They do still get a chance here to apply the pressure from a corner. Hawkins with an interesting save there. Thankfully, I think it was Keat who cleared it off the back of that. And now Shusha actually with a chance to get us going here on the counter-attack. But good slide tackle there from Willem Ebing to put that out for a from. But shortly off the back of that, we now go to the other side for a corner. So hopefully a chance for us here to strike first. Adam White. We'll pick out Janssen, who takes the ball from that corner and does beat Connor Tracy to not quite make it 1-0 because, unfortunately, he was offside. But a couple of highlights there down both ends. Still nil, all just shy of the half-hour mark. And it looks like those couple of highlights that we got there about halfway through the first half might be all we see here in the first leg of this Champions League semi-final date. Nil all as we head into the sheds. And to be fair... Not playing that well either in terms of the shots compared to Auckland City as well. As the shots on target, to be fair, they're on top in the three big stats as well as the XG. So we're going to give the guys here a bit of a rev up. And hopefully that might change things in the second half. We'll leave them all out there and see if they can improve. Because this should be our best 11, but currently not going too well. Nil all at half time in our home league. And a couple of minutes into the second half, hopefully that team talk has worked because it's a throw in here just inside of the Auckland City half. The ball there finds Sukamoto back to Vic Dross. Now Duty Radom pings that out to Shusha, albeit that's a really poor option. Just here's the ball there to Genie for Auckland City. And they might get a chance to do something here down the right-hand side, but thankfully really loose touch during Lunzo Johnson can win that ball back for us. Now Duty Radom, nice one over the top there. Looking for Shusha, but unfortunately a bit too much on that one. Interesting across the field past the year. We nearly get it back, but unfortunately, I think that was Slottermaker who keeps that for Auckland City. But now we win it on the left hand side of our defense. Sukamoto now on the ball picks out Justin Keat back to Sukamoto. Lou Enrique, first time pass up there for Justin Keat goes down, but the ball then finds its way to Lorenzo Johnson off the foot of Louis Enrique, and we take a 1 0 lead at home. He busts out the dance there. Does the Australian attacking midfielder and thankfully a bit of a rev up there at half time might have worked going in to the second half. We take a 1 0 lead. Did think that things might break down once Justin Keat did go down, but thankfully Louis Enrique picks out Lorenzo Janssen. Good finish into the bottom right corner to make it 1 0. And just making our way into the last half hour of this game, not too long off the back of that opening goal, but we have got Justin Keat down to a red heart and also our left winger and striker. Not on too good ratings. So we're going to make the subs here up front. Paquette at right wing. Gilbert up front. And also DeHotman de Villiers can come on at left wing. Change all those parts apart from the goal scorer. And Lorenzo Johnson hopefully grab a cushion goal with a half hour left. And hopefully that will be the case here. A few minutes off the back of those subs. And a poor throw in there gives the ball straight to Gil Paquette. Fresh off the bench. What can he do down that right hand side? Picks out Sukamoto. Goes back there. To duty, Raid on a shot there, which takes a wicked deflection. It's an own goal against Armando Gini, and that is what we're after. A reasonably quick fire double early stages of the second half over the course of 15 minutes. That makes it 2 0. Hopefully, one more goal here might just give us a bit of breathing room going in to that second leg 
up in Auckland, but tuning against the team like Auckland City, I think we'll take that, especially as usually they haven't beaten us too often in the save, especially in terms of 90-minute games. Now it's a free kick. Adam White there with a header, but unfortunately it goes wide, but certainly now on the front foot. Tune in front with 15 minutes left, and now we can make one of our final couple of subs. Adam White is down to a red heart. Barisic will come on for him as we still have a 2 0 lead. And only a few minutes on from that previous sub, now in the last 10 minutes of this one, the goal scorer in Lorenzo Johnson, the first goal scorer, he's down to a red heart. So, what we might do here is move Gil Paquette into the cam roll, seeing there's no cam in the squad with that late addition of Sam Brown. And Nathan Walker can come on and play right wing. In these last couple of minutes, still holding on to a 2 0 lead. As I said, I'll be pretty happy with that heading up to the Ramon Triple A Arena for the second league. Hopefully, we can just see this out. But now there's a late corner here to Auckland City. It's Dawkins on the ball. I fought there. McGoldrick might have got the ball, but apparently not. That is a bad time to give away a penalty. And Auckland City here in injury time. Off this first league through Lee, they get a chance to put themselves right back in this tie. Straight down the middle, for some reason, Hawkins kind of went to the right, then back to the left to try and save it. Didn't work out. And 2-1, looks like it's going to be the scoreline going in to that second league. Hopefully, no more action for the team in blue in this first league. And thankfully, that will be the case to be fair in terms of stats and XG. That was actually quite an even game. I say stats. Shots and shots on target. We should have probably picked up a win from that game, but Auckland City were very efficient with the shots that they did have in that late penalty, which no doubt did help their XG out quite a bit. Does mean they're still right in this tie. Going back home for that second leg, we've got a 2 1 lead. We'll come back shortly, do a recap of our seven league game, which actually is quite a big one against top of the table Christchurch United, before hopefully we can hold on to our lead and make the Champions League final. And here are the highlights from our Southern League clash against Christchurch United. Only went for semi-rotation for this game because these guys are going quite well this season. Well on top, but unfortunately for around 15 minutes left, they actually scored the opening goal there through Baker. So a bit panicked here that we're actually going to lose a game in the Southern League. But thankfully somehow that ball finds its way through to Louis Enrique with five minutes left. He picks out Steven Lopez and we escape with a one or draw really frustratingly. We've conceded the only shot on target from the opposition. Yet again, but continuing to struggle in the Southern League, which is real concern now, because there is a chance that we might get in trouble if we do slip up much more, especially against both Christchurch United and Nelson Suburbs in the second half of the season. As you can see, a lot more first-team players out for that game than the previous one against Nelson Suburbs, but for some reason still could only manage a draw. So in a bit of an average run of form outside of that first league win, over Auckland City, you can see still in second on the Southern League table because thankfully Nelson Suburbs, they drew with the Dunedin City Royals. So it didn't hurt us too much, but definitely not quite picking up the points as you would expect even with some rotation in those Southern League games. So maybe need to move away from the vertical tiki taka off the back of this OFC Champions League next time that we get a bit of a mid-season break. Could be a good idea potentially to try out the Gagan press that has been working with the New Zealand national team that could marry up quite well for when we do try and develop players to make their way into the All Whites in the save but the recent form. Not too great, thankfully not losing, but not doing too well either, albeit if we ever look at Auckland City and how they got on in their game, they lost 2-1 to Waiheke United, so that is not a good result for them either. I think both teams might just have their eye a little bit on the second leg of this Champions League semi-final, which is completely understandable. Unfortunately, did suffer an injury as well in that crush United game, or at least in terms of the lead up to it. Cullen Elliott has picked up yet another hip injury, and he is out for three to four months. That does mean our backup right back is out of the Champions League as well, a decent chunk as well of the Southern League season. And being third choice right back, I'm pretty sure these days, for the All Whites, that will also keep him out of the FIFA World Cup if there was going to be an injury to someone like Martin Damon or the soon to be retired Nico Kerwin. So that is actually a pretty significant injury. Thankfully, we've got Louis Enrique as the starter here these days, and Julian Pike is registered 
fought the Champions League squads, so still got some back up in that right back position, but Callum Elliott yet again will be out for a little while, but thankfully that's the only injury concern going in to the second leg up in Auckland, where we do take on City, we've got a 2-1 lead, hopefully we can hold on to it and make a Champions League final. And here are the team sheets for the second leg of this OFC Champions League semi-final as we take a 2-1 lead here up to Auckland yet again. Auckland City do look fairly settled from that first leg, just one change for us, and Gilbert starts in place of Lopez, he's on a heavy workload, having had to score the equaliser in that Christchurch United game, but thankfully, unlike Auckland City, we didn't lose, so I suppose that's a positive, and hopefully we can hold on to our one goal advantage and make the final. And just shot the 20 minute mark with the first highlight here of the second leg, and it is a throw in here inside the final third to the home team. To be fair, so far we've actually been the team based on stats who have been on the front foot. A nice ball over the top there. Four stipe Ukic Hawkins kind of came out for it, but thankfully the header goes just over the crossbar. Still nil all on the day, 2 1 on aggregate. And now we're down the other end here for a free kick. Adam White to McGoldrick. Big chance there, far post, but unfortunately can't keep it down. Still nil all in the second league. And only a few minutes on from that really big chance there to McGoldrick from set pieces on the ball now as a new highlight does start, but thankfully start to make our way into the opposition half, albeit as I say that, loose touch from Janssen, and they do get the ball back there through Mikado. He's back on the ball there again, but that's a really poor pass. Sukumoto, good one, two, picks out Justin Keat. We almost butchered that chance, but thankfully Justin Keat with a first time finish with his right foot, the all whites right winger, Gives us a 1-0 lead here up in Auckland. And that's our buffer goal on aggregate as well. That makes it 3-1 in this tie. I thought Sukamoto should have taken that more left and taken that shot on himself. But thankfully, actually look for Justin Keat, who probably is a better goal-scoring option. It actually did go pretty close to straight into the path of Connor Tracy, but thankfully couldn't keep it out of the back of the net. We make it 1-0 a few minutes later. It's a free kick, which Sukamoto almost puts top right corner just high and wide, but we free one up on aggregate with 10 minutes left in the first half of the second leg, but shortly off the back of that, now down the other end for a corner to Auckland City. Thankfully, we somewhat deal with the danger, but now Deanda on the attack, picks out slow maker Dawkins, floats this far post looking for our former player in Jamie Fletcher. Interesting tackle there on Ukuk, but thankfully it's not a foul and now a chance here for Gilbert to get us on the counter attack. Our striker today down that right hand side plays it back to Louis Enrique. Now, Duty Radom to Johnson. Long range Jefford, and that one comes off the crossbar. We might still be on the attack off the back of that. In fact, not. The highlight gets cut off. Still 1 0 up late on in the first half of the second league. As you can see from the stats, definitely a team on the front foot, but unfortunately, not too many shots on target. But pretty happy with how that first half went, especially now that we've got a two goal lead in the overall tie 3 1. On aggregate, so I think no changes needed. We'll just tell the guys to keep on going. Maybe they could do just a little bit better, and we'll get the second half underway with a 3 1 lead overall. And only a few minutes into the second half, an early corner for us here where a goal might be able to put this tight up. We take it shortly. White to Johnson, back to Adam White, starts to make his way inside the box. Gilbert, back to Johnson. Some wonderful short passing, and Adam White will pop up with his first goal of the season to be fair. I think that one took a pretty big deflection. Off an Auckland C defender, but we'll take that. That makes it 4-1 overall. And maybe the vertical tiki-taka, we should stick with it, at least in terms of our best 11, because that is a really nice goal. Good short passing. Definitely a big deflection there to make sure that one does get past Connor Tracy. But Adam White with a big goal to make it 4-1 overall. And a bit of a gap in highlights off the back of that early goal in the second half. We're now about to make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game. There's a free kick here for Auckland City. And imagine... They need to go pretty soon to try and keep themselves alive. In the Champions League this season, they try and pick out there. I think that's Dominguez down the right-hand side, but I think he was offside anyway, and we intercept it. Now, Jansen, he gets the ball for us. Sukamoto up to Keat as we look to hopefully pile the pressure here on Auckland City and maybe make them a bit miserable in front of their home fans. Adam White cuts inside wonderfully. He picks up a double, that one. No deflection needed. That's an absolute beautiful curving effort. Into that right-hand corner, that makes it 3-0. And with 20 minutes left, a four-goal advantage, you'd like to think that is the tie done, and we should be making our way into yet another OFC Champions League final, this time against the team not from New Zealand, so it should be pretty winnable for us. 
later this week, but Adam White comes up with a big double in the second half. Off the back of that, going to do some subs here. Julian Pike can come on for Henrique, not going too well. And also, we'll give some game time to Connor Kerwin, seeing as Victor Ross is on a yellow card in this competition, but feeling pretty good now. 5-1 in front on aggregate. And short the back of those subs and that third goal on this day, we've now got a throw in here inside of the final third. Keat loses it on the ball there briefly. Pike almost gets that one back for us, but Auckland City, they do clear their lines, but fresh off the bench, Connor Kerwin is there to tidy things up. Pike looking for Keat, can't quite find him. And Auckland City look like they might get a chance on the counter-attack, but Dirty Radom with a good tackle. Unfortunately, shortly off the back of that, we give the ball away, but soon after, Auckland City try and clear it, don't do a good job. They then get a chance to clear it again, but give it straight back to Ahmed Shush, a good one too between him and Dirty Radom Tracy. Not the best positioning there, and it's a good finish as well. Into that top right corner, just inside of that post. 4-0 on the day. This is a lot more like what you'd expect from a team with our credentials in the New Zealand National League this season, at least in terms of the season preview that we have seen. We should be red hot favourites, and we're showing it here away from home instead of of at the GMP, that makes it 4-0, 6-1 overall. That should definitely put this tie to bed. Now, Dirty Radom, who's been pretty good today, down to a red hat. Lapane can come on for him, as we should be making our way through to the Champions League final. In fact, shortly off the back of that sub, another highlight does start. Maybe can make it 5 Now We try and make our way here out from the back. Kerwin goes back to Hawkins. Definitely a lot more solid back, it feels like, than we were in the final last season when Mark Anderson was in goal. So hopefully Hawkins can keep nice and fit for that final coming up soon off the back of this one. But now Auckland City actually will get a chance on the counter-attack. Ukic starts to make his way down that right-hand side. Has some support. He eventually will look for it. And Willem Ebing will put that one away. It's his first goal of the season. Nice finish there. Into the bottom left corner. Good goal there on the counter-attack for Auckland City. But you imagine at this point, it's probably too little too late. 4-1 on the day and 6 to on aggregate with only 15 minutes left. And in fact, off the back of that, we can make our final couple of subs here because the Hotman de Villiers can come on for Shusha on a red heart and also will take off Adam White. He was brilliant today for Barisic. Just make sure they're all fresh for the final with only 15 minutes left. We have four goals in front on aggregate. And just make our way into the last five minutes of this game. Have just noticed there that for once, we're actually the team who have scored all our shots on target in this one overall stats actually pretty even, so a bit of a funny game there, getting a bit of karma coming back from some of those results we have picked up recently. Down in the Southern League, that is a very good 4-1 win over Auckland City in the second league. It was quite tight after the first one, but thankfully really put them to the sword in that second half. That double to Adam White was quite crucial, and we go through 6-2 on aggregate. It's definitely a comfortable win there in the semi-finals of the Champions League, as I suggested maybe actually better off taking on the New Zealand team in the semi-final instead of the final. So we've got two chances to make sure that we do go for instead of just a one-off where sometimes we can be just a little bit botly, but it does mean that later this week we'll be coming back and should be able to pick up our first Champions League here at Cashmere Technical. So a bit of revenge there on Auckland City for that Champions League final last season. We beat them 2-1 in the first league. 4-1 in the second. Apparently the first league triumph was more helpful. Not too sure how that was quite the case there. New Zealand football review. But nonetheless, we are through to the Champions League final. And as suspected off the back of the result of that first league of the other semi, we take on Navua, who are the champions of Fiji. So it'll be interesting to see how good those guys are. A one and a half star reputation club. They have drawn the away legs in the Champions League knockout so far, but done a pretty good job in the first league to make sure they go through and also won all their games in the group stage as well. It's definitely a team that we need to respect, but hopefully it is a game that we can win having already got past someone like Auckland City, and especially because the grand final is at the GMP. So we've got home advantage for the Champions League final, which will be coming up at the end of this week, and hopefully we can make amends for that final loss on penalties to Auckland City last season. But that will do it for today, thankfully, making our way past Auckland City into the Champions League final of Oceania. If you enjoyed that episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up 
on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well obviously gonna come back later this week for that Champions League final and around that we could either play Green Island in the first round of the Chatham Cup but they're down a division from the Southern League so I think that Southern United away from home could be a bit more interesting if that Champions League final doesn't take too long which hopefully it won't considering it's against the Fijian team we should probably be winning that pretty comfortably but I think we'll plan to come back for that Navu Champions League final and also Selwyn United and that could also be a bus trip as I'm pretty sure we haven't played those guys away from home yet so until later this week for the Champions League final and probably Selwyn United as well thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers